Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at a weapon that is phased in and out of the off meta in PvP since the game launched, and that would be the Bloody Helis. The Bloody Helis is the longest heavy thrusting sword, and it also comes with a unique Astro Floor that can combo into itself and also provides iframes. Heavy thrusting swords used to be off meta due to the jumping light attack comboing into a second light attack meaning that they could play quite aggressive. That was removed in patch 1.08, which is the same patch that reduced counter damage, meaning heavy thrusting swords got a lot worse in that patch. They fell off after this, but with patch 1.1, they now cannot be poised through, meaning they will always stagger in one hit. Before they could, meaning that despite being an aggressive setup, you would still have to play kind of passive since you couldn't actually aggress very well. The Bloody Helix specifically was also affected by the bleed nerf in patch 1.04, reducing the combos it had from cracking blood loss. In patch 1.09, From Software said that they reduced the thrusting weapon hitboxes. This is not the case, and nobody that I have ever seen could find a single objective instance of them doing so despite looking through the attack data for many days. Now all of this sounds like heavy thrusting swords and the bloody helis are bad. That's not the case. The current bloody helis has some good things going for it. As I've already mentioned, the Ash Boar provides 21 iframes instantly in a retreating twirl. This can be freely aimed along with the follow-up attacks to be a good replacement for the Bloodhound step and quick step dodging and attacking since they were nerfed in patch 1.1 and heavy thrusting swords aren't really that good for crouch attacks or rolling attacks, which is what the Bloodhound Step and Quick Step provides when you attack out of them. The Ash of War will combo into all three attacks if you can proc bleed in the first or second hit. It is also the longest heavy thrusting sword, and also the only one with native bleed. The total effective damage when accounting for bleed is the highest in its class, and that means the Bloody Helis is the peak of heavy thrusting swords, and you do feel that when playing it. The main bread and butter of heavy thrusting swords is the jumping attack and the running heavy attack. The jumping attack is quite good when free aiming because you have a greater ability to position yourself as opposed to all of its other attacks. As well as it can sometimes combo into a second R1, specifically when the bleed effect procs, because that does provide a little bit more of a stun. So you can combo into a second light attack. No other heavy thrusting sword gets this, unless if you infuse with bleed. The running heavy attack is a very long range attack, however, it doesn't have that good of tracking, so you have to be careful with people strafing it and punishing the recovery of it. It is very good for chase downs, however it doesn't really have that much use anywhere else. The jumping attack is just better for neutral. For my build, I, of course, have 60 vigor, as that is the vigor soft cap. I have 20 endurance to get to 109 poise without fat rolling. I have 12 strength and 29 dexterity to provide optimal scaling for the bloody healus. 55 arcane is not reaching any soft caps, but it does provide optimal damage for the bloody healus. And I tested this using Slugbot, which you can find in a write up on how to use it in the build guide document in the description. For weapons, I am using the Bloody Helis 2 hand. If you wanted to use something as an off hand, the Twin Bird Kite Shield would be a good choice, but you would have to change your endurance. For talismans, I have the Bullgold's Talisman to boost my poise to 109, which is the recommended soft cap now, although for all intents and purposes outside of the competitive PvP, poise is really irrelevant since everything will stun in one outside of one hand s stock or thrusting swords, which is what 109 poise is for, and 88 poise is also another recommended breakpoint, but that is for backswing attacks, so the second light attack of a light weapon will have less poise damage than the first attack, meaning you can poise through it. I have Crimson Armor Medallion and Urtree's Favor boosting my HP, and Urtree's Favor is also boosting my stamina and equip load. For the final talisman, I am using Great Jar's Arsenal for the equip load since reaching 109 poise takes a lot of investment. For armor, I have the Crucible Tree Helm, the Tree Sentinel Armor, Omen Gauntlets, and Tree Sentinel Greaves, giving me 109 poise and being optimized against holy and physical damage. 
For the Crystal Tears and Great Rune, I am using the standard PvP setup, which is Morgoth's Great Rune for the extra 25% HP, Crimson Bubble Tier for the HP regain when you reach low HP, and the Opline Heart Tier, which gives 10% damage negation, increasing my survivability.